Robert Heath has argued that crises emerge when issues management fails. He describes issues management as a process that helps organizations detect and mitigate risks related to trends or changes in an organization's socio-political environment. In short, he defines it as anticipatory strategic management. More importantly, he also describes issues management as a stakeholder-centered process that emphasizes an organization's obligations as stewards of those affected by the work the organization does. This suggests that when we talk about what it means to manage issues and risk factors, we're also talking about creating socially responsible organizations, those the stakeholders believe actually care about the impact the organization has on their employees the communities, and the world. Yet in a modern context, being socially responsible may even represent a risk or an issue to be managed. Issue and risk management is never easy. It certainly wouldn't be interesting if it were. When we explore issue factors, one of the points that emerges is that to understand crisis communication, we must simultaneously look outside and inside the organization to better understand the situation and the organization's ability to respond to it. This suggests that it's essential to understand some of the organizational factors that contribute to crises and organization's ability to manage them. Two broad theories help to frame the core organizational considerations in crisis communication. First, Lucemore's theory of crisis management suggests that the emergence of crises also causes a ripple effect of problems within organizations. For example, crises can prompt power struggles bubbling to the surface and also highlight inadequacies in leadership and management communication. Second, Stack's multidimensional model of public relations argues that crisis management is primarily a matter of marshalling internal resources to effectively manage public perceptions of the crisis. Taken together, these theories highlight the importance of an inside-out approach to crisis communication. We have to ask what internal factors are likely to facilitate both issues and risk management as well as crisis response. The first two factors emphasize the situation and context in which crises are developed and managed. However, the biggest X factor in crises is how stakeholders will react to issues, crisis, and the organization. Yet in the study of crisis communication, stakeholder factors remain one of the most challenging and understudied factors influencing crises, yet in practice they're probably the most important. More attention is typically paid to the response strategies that organizations use rather than evaluating stakeholder evaluations of them, as well as the social psychological factors influencing those evaluations. However, in recent years, important research and application has begun to take better form in understanding stakeholder emotion in crisis, national identity, and the interrelationships between stakeholders, organizations, and the issues that affect them both. Each of the previous factors are essential in understanding crisis communication, but the fourth factor highlights what we know about crisis response messages. Crisis response tactics or strategies have been studied for more than 20 years with several taxonomies emerging, including Benoit's summary of image repair tactics, Coombe's discussion of tactics used in situational crisis communication theory, Mohammed Gardner, and Palio's taxonomy of organizational impression management tactics, or Deers and Tomeno's categorization of crisis response tactics. The result of these works was the identification of more than 40 distinctive response tactics that could be used in nearly an infinite number of combinations to respond to a crisis. As these response tactics emerged, so too have different theories of crisis response, with some foundational theories like Benoit's image repair theory or Coombe's situational crisis communication theory coming to the fore, as well as more than 80 theories that have been applied or developed to better understand and predict successful crisis response over the last seven decades. Finally, what do crises really mean for organizations? 
Crises can mean disaster and doom, but more often than not, they don't spell the end of the organization. Instead, they can represent meaningful opportunities for organizations to learn and reflect on their practices, not only to meet stakeholder expectations, but also to minimize the likelihood of the recurrence of the crisis in the future. Internal reflection about crises and change after crisis is important. However, most organizations are most concerned with anticipating and mitigating negative outcomes associated with stakeholder behavioral intention during and after crises. So how stakeholders are likely to react and act in response to a crisis is at the forefront of most practitioners' minds. Understanding the impact of a crisis on the organization's brand, brand community, consumer purchase intention, or the effects of word of mouth and social media engagement on stakeholder attitudes throughout a crisis are also all essential to understanding the outcomes of the crisis.